it's obviously straightforward. The image is in reverse, and you take a print from the top surface. So you're obviously cutting away the background. You get a roller, rolling at the top. And different printing processes, you tend to use different presses. So with um, printing lino print, you have to use, it's best to use an uh, Albion press or um, they're quite old fashioned presses. Just see if I've got a picture in here. Not organized. Here we are. Different presses, and I say for different techniques. That's a Albion press. It, you, what you do, you, um, you put your block on the press and you put your paper on the top obviously you turn a handle and it goes underneath this platform thing you pull a handle and it presses straight down onto it so it's an impact straight down fair amount of pressure but nowhere near as much pressure as needed as when you print an etching and just for interest so that's a litho press that sort of scrapes that's that's an old-fashioned litho press when they used to print from a stone Quite a good illustration here because you can see obviously that is the um, I might mention that um, with etching you have more techniques to achieve, you know, achieve a result on a plate than any other form of printmaking. Um, now you can see this particular plate here, it's line etching and open we call open biting, and you can see it's exactly the same image. At the bottom here I've got a cross section and the red is showing you where the ink was applied. So on this side we've got a relief print, so we're rolling up the top surface like I just showed you with the line of print. Whereas here it's printed as an etching, so the ink, the, the white lines that were in recess, you like, the bit piece that were cut away, the white there, but here they hold the ink. So you get a print from the down below the surface. Having said that, it is possible as this is an open bite, oh, you couldn't do it in my plate, but this is an open biting plate, so it's a bit like this. Um, you can etch the plate very deep, it's even deeper than that, but very deep, you see deep areas. So you can ink that up so you've got yellow so it goes down below, like that. And then you could get a roller with a blue roller and roll blue on the top, so you combine the two colours and run it through the pressing one go. So that's possible. Now with etching, you have to start off by coating the plates. I usually do line etching first, which is this here, and you can see the difference. This, this has got aquatint on it, which is the next stage. So to do a line etching, I, ha I forgot to bring my uh, drawing books, but you know, sketchbooks. But um, I would normally have my drawing books. Now I work out a very simple composition what I plan to do. And remember, it has to be in reverse. So my wax plate, I'll show you here. Um, you start off. Copper is the best metal to use. You start off by coating the plate with a wax ground. Heat up the, the plate and just roll roll the wax over the whole plate. So that gives you a coating that is a complete acid resist. And you can smoke it as well, which makes it much darker, so you can see what you're doing when you're drawing. You then get whatever tool you want to use. Uh, I use a very fine needle, and just simply draw through the wax. You're not pressing hard. That line is obviously exposing the metal, and when I put it in the acid, that would obviously bite, bite the metal away, and that line would print as a, a line on the print. And if, if some of you want to run your finger on that end there, you can actually feel, feel the ink like, on that end very easily. It's like embossing on the plate. But you can feel the ink raised up. So that's the first stage, drawing the line etching, and that's the proof there. Now, so example there, you can see quite clearly the line etching, some of the lines look thicker. And the next stage, I, some people would leave it at that perhaps and do some cross hatching, whatever, and that could be a final print. But as, as you see with my prints, I use colour and I have to apply aquatint onto the plate to achieve those colours, to hold the colour in certain areas. 
Now, you know, if you take um, the old-fashioned way of printing a photograph, it would be in a dark room, and you get a perfect tone, don't you, when you look at a photograph. But when you reproduce something in a magazine or a newspaper, it like pixelates it. With, you use, they use a screen, so it breaks it down into dots, doesn't it, to, to achieve those tones. Well, if you're an artist and you want to do that, you can use resin powder, and it's a process called aquatinting. Aqua meaning water, obviously water tone, so it gives you like a watercolour effect. Now this is resin powder in this pot, if I just bang it, bang it, it's not very good for you, but resin powder. <laughs> so those, that's very, very fine ground up resin in there. And at home, rather than use that, which I used to, um, I've got a very large box and there's an illustration of it. It's a very simple bit of apparatus. You've got a curved bottom and that yellow represents the resin powder. So you, all you have to do is an enclosed box, you turn the paddle and of course you create a big large cloud of dust in the top of the box. You leave it for about a minute or so for the heavy particles to fall. Or well, by the way, you've obviously um, etched that plate and you've cleaned off all the, all the brown so it's all clean. So that, that looks as if it's got lines on it and that's ready for applicants. So you imagine you've turned the handle, the whole box is cloud of dust, open the trap door, put the plate in, and let gravity work, and after about five minutes you can take it out, and you do that a couple of times without sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you, you have to be very careful. Once I did one recently, it was really annoying. I did the plate, it's perfect, and I was going like that, and I had something hanging from my other sleeve, and it sort of, sort of not, you know, just ruin the whole, have to do it all again. But you have to get it perfect on there. Then you put it under a direct flame and look at it very carefully. Heat up, you're heating up the plate. It's on a metal grid, you see. So you're, you're heating the plate up. And as you can see, it look, just looks as if you, you haven't dusted very well. But as it heats up, it goes transparent. So you know it's mounting on there. By overheating it, the little dots would spread out and make a complete acid resist. So you have to be very careful. Get it just right. And you get the whole plate gradually after about 10 minutes you can do the whole a large plate or more and so what you've created is a plate with all these little dots on the top which are going to be the acid they're fused on there by the heat and they're the acid resist so when you put it in the acid it's going to eat in between those little speckles of dust and what's going to happen is that the longer you leave it in there the deeper and the wider it gets and the darker the tone will be so you can see what happens, like you can see the grad, as I leave it in the acid, it's getting darker and darker and darker. And if you like pass this round, this is an aquatint strip, if on this dark end you can run, run your finger nail backwards along there, you can actually feel the texture run it backwards. You can, you can feel it getting coarser and coarser. And when I'm moving it, you can see the very shiny bits. Those pieces are the pieces that I take out initially. And you can see the darker bits as well. So the sky hasn't had very long at all. It's had very, you know, some of the, you know, the water's there white, isn't it? And then you can see a little bit darker on the sky, so all the tones you can see on the plate. I've, I've used zinc plates, but I haven't used steel. What's the advantage yeah. of the steel? steel. Sorry? Steel. It would, yeah, what's the advantage of the steel? Well, it's because of wearing. Copper is a softish metal. Yeah, yeah. And rubbing the, co the colours can be a bit abrasive. Mm -hmm. So that when you're rubbing the colours in, it's not so much the pressure, really, but rubbing that colour in, can wear the plate. So on a very delicate aquatint, after about 20 or 30 prints, um, start wearing. I don't, have you heard of dry point? Yeah. Dry point, yeah. If you do dry point, after about 10 prints, you lose the burn. Yeah. So you have to have that still. If you want to do a larger tradition, oh. you have to have it still faced. Okay. To protect the wear. Well, it's a <coughs> Now, colour printing. Where's the book gone? Under here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're aware that, you're aware that when, when someone's printing in a, in, a, in a magazine or whatever, they use the three primary colours in black, so they print obviously colours on top of each other and register. And artists tend to do the same thing. They'd, they'd print up one colour on one plate, run it, register it, make a mark, run it through and print the next plate on top of it. So you might do that two or three times as well. But I, I tend to just use one plate. Um, just, just covering the yeah, uh, just check it. Yeah, yeah. You can, there is a tool. 
Yeah, it's Robert. Oh, it's Robert. I used to grind up on uh, Yeah, Robert. So what I'm doing is, this is warm, and you saw me scrape the ink on, and I'm just doing this very gently. But the then the next colour, I've got, um, that's a very bright blue. But because it's brown now already, I'm just putting a very small amount of it up. And that should be a good one. And I just need my finger to rub that in, so I'm pressing that out. And Sometimes I might use that only up to about four or five. And then this part of the hand, the palm, I'm just skimming it very gently. You see a bit, quite a bit more ink comes off when you're hand wiping. The idea of being very gently is if you start pressing too hard, you know, the idea is to keep it as much ink as possible. Anyway, you see there's quite a bit more ink coming off and better with the edges. Yeah, but I notice so your bevel is very subtle. Yeah. You're, you're, you, you bevel them so you don't cut the blank. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's always um, keeping it clean. Yeah. And then that just lays on the press now. Then the paper, this is the paper I'm using. The paper's obviously got size in it. And um, that, be, that wouldn't print. If you printed on that, it wouldn't print. So you have to damp the paper. And I leave it overnight usually and then it's perfect, um, perfect for printing. Now we just run it through. Yeah, at home, yeah, home, <laughs> I've, got, I, at home I've got a big press with big gears, so it's yeah. you just a, a small print and then just roll it once and that's through. Yeah. It's so easy when you know how, but it's too easy to practice. Yeah, and I see you, and when you've had years. 